Hey guys, Zulu Monk here. Wanted to do a video um, discussing the uh, file management and um, also the OP1 drum utility. Basically, you know how to get your files on your OP1, um, back them up on your computer, uh, you know access those files, and also how to create uh, custom drum kits from files that you have on your computer and import them into the OP1. Um, you know as opposed to recording directly in. So first things first, I'm going to connect my OP1 to my computer by hitting shift, then com, and then hitting the disk, sorry, the disk button. Sometimes it does that, it'll um, play just a couple of random notes when it's uh, about to go into to disk mode. So I'll uh, give it a couple seconds and it'll pop up on my desktop and I'll be able to access it from there. It should be connecting soon. Okay, there it is. So double click on that, and bam, here are the four you know folders that all of your information is saved. Then you have the album folder, which records two sides, the I mean, both sides of your albums that you can uh, record to these six minute songs. Your drum folder, which um, contains your snapshot, which is basically the presets that you saved on your, um, your OP1. I've already changed the names of mine, but if you want to, you can just listen to one and just to get a feel for what's going on inside your your, uh, your drum samples and you know name them accordingly um, you've also got the user folder which basically is uh, what's currently I believe it's what's currently you know saved onto those eight banks and then same thing with the synth folder except for the synth folder well synth presets you can't audition these presets unless they're sampled so if you hear this one like this is not a sample this is OP1 patch. this is an actual patch on the OP1 so um, there's extra information there, so you can't really audition those, but for something like this, this is an audio sample, so you'll be able to hear. Just because it's an audio sample versus the, um, the actual, like, synth engine, um, presets. And the user folder, same thing. And the synth area. And then the tape is where your four, um, your four tracks are. And this is the file that I, you know, I usually export the most, I usually don't do too many album recordings. Um... Because usually I'm recording line out into something else because I want to add extra effects on top or do some other stuff. But so the tape is the bread and butter of um you know everything you're doing on your OP1. So those are the four main folders. So um I guess next I'll touch on how to create uh, you know custom samples for um, for your OP1. There's a free program called the OP1 Drum Utility. I'll put the link in the description for the video. You can use this tool to create your own um basically your own sample uh, drum kits really. Um, so you can upload any sample you want here. So I have a folder where I keep basically all of my um, my samples I like to use. This is, usually it's a little bit larger than this. I'm trying to consolidate and just use a couple of things. But um, I can come in here, like I have this is folders named symbols. So it's a crash there. See, we have a hi-hat. So literally all you have to do in order to place that into this drum kit and um, build it up is drag and drop it over and it's there you can actually audition it on the button that it will correspond to on op1 and you can change um you know the pitch a particular uh, sample or you can change the play mode so you can loop it if you want to or just make it you know just start release go to the end I don't know if it previews the loop, but you basically can change all the parameters that you'd want um, before having to get into the OP1. So you can already set it up. So the second you import it in, you're just ready to go. So that's one way of doing it. You know, having these uh, these pre-cut um, sound files that, that most uh, digital audio workstations or other um, other systems that you know use samples, they use the same format of sounds. You can kind of just input them into the system. Just also heads up, there's a total duration count on the bottom. As I mentioned before, your drum sampler can only sample up to 12 seconds. So you, this is you know just keeps you um, mindful of how much uh, space you have left left, I guess, in the drum kit because it'll let you know if your if your drum kit goes over 12 seconds, it'll like you can't export this because it's too it's the the uh, drum kit is too long and it won't work in the OP. So it's good to have that there. So I'm going to close this down and open up another one so that I can have this fresh for the next section. So. In my previous video, I showed you how to um, chop a sample up in the OP1, which is fun and it actually looks like it's very intuitive once you get around it. But you can also use other um, other tools. Right now, I have Ableton Live loaded up, 
and I have the amen break that I was um, using from before. So here's the break that you probably everybody knows by heart by now. So I have that sampled, well, basically played in. And what I did was, um, I, I mean, I time stretched that to, to match the, the BPM I have in here. And then I went over, well, once I have it, you know, um, cut, stretch the way I wanted to, you can right click on that and go crop, sorry, not crop sample, slice to new MIDI track, which I've already done. And I'll slice this to, slice this to a new MIDI track. Now there's an extra step in order to get the sound files that we need, because like I said, in here, you just want, you know, one clip. For each particular portion and on the op one we did it we had um 16 steps for that whole sequence so i when i slice this this track there's an option to you know show how many i guess to show the, the how frequently you want your slices to be cut so i set it for um one cut for every quarter note so i got 16 slices out of that and then from here get in here from here there's a 16 slices laid out across this grid so what i did was um since this, that was just basically referencing that one sample, what you can do is you can right click on any of these slices, and I did it for all of them, and go down to crop sample. So that'll crop that actual sample and it'll take it out and it'll save that particular crop for that section. So that's what we need. We want that one hit, that one section of the sample. Um, so from there, I did it for all of those. So now what you can do is you can right click again and go show in Finder. It'll take you to this, uh, this crop folder that contains all the crop samples that I had from before. So there's all 16 hits, all cropped out perfectly the way we want them to be. So now literally all you have to do is go back to the drum utility, go in one by one, and drag and drop these onto their respective keys. Now, um, you usually like to have it only on the white keys, but it's gonna go between white and black, but that's fine. Um, I'll just drag these over. And you'll hear it once, um, once I get all of these into this folder. I guess I could stop at eight, because eight is enough, so you can get half of it. But so if I play these and audition them, So yeah, so basically that, that's that first you know, first half of the of the break. So you can just play that and all I have to do is hit the export AIF um, for OP1 file or well, button and it'll create the file. Then I can drag and drop that file into the folder that I mentioned earlier. Let me go back here into the drum snapshot folder and you can you know name it whatever you want as long as it's I know I think in the in the manual it says 10 characters, but I go up to 12 and it still works. So you can know, have just about up to 12 characters to use to um to name your um your samples. So that's like I said, that's one way of doing it. You can do that literally with anything. So if you have a library of um of samples, you know, within Ableton, at least for what I, how I understand Ableton, a library of samples you have within Ableton, and they're all sliced up to that slice to MIDI um format. You can just go in. It is a little bit tedious, but it's better than having to slice it and do it on your own. You can go in and do the crop sample and then export those files and create um, drum kits for your OP1 that are ready to go that you can you know, save and switch out on the fly. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, you know, this, is, uh, this is actually one of my shorter videos, so that's good that I was able to cover you know, a whole lot of ground in, um, in a very short period of time here. Uh, but that's, that's all I have for this particular this particular video. Um, if you have any questions, as always, you know, leave them in the comments below. And uh, thank you for watching.